do that. But the job was a catch-all. It was created in part because at the time the organization wanted to have somebody who would do media work. Mm -hmm. Because every time there was a reason to talk to the media, nobody on the board of directors was willing to for fear of losing the job the next day because there's still no, no human rights protection and that was a legitimate concern. So that was an ongoing challenge. Beyond that, you know, they had resources that had accumulated over time. And I thought, well, you know, maybe it's time now that we actually get somebody who can do political workforce on a regular basis mm -hmm. with some continuity and the media stuff and the public education stuff. Um, I went after it because I saw the youth support angle of it, but the rest of it came part and parcel. So I ended up getting the job, and my office was in the front lobby space of what had been the Rooms Club when it was on Gaudi Street, the old movie theater building. And across the street was the Nova Scotia Person with AIDS Coalition, which had just formed maybe two years earlier. But that was their location, it was across the street. And I, had, I was given an office, but we had no photocopier. I had, I had a phone on a desk, That's, that was my office. I brought in my own electric typewriter. Um, I needed, and, and, they, and the board had arranged for me to have access to the office across the street at the, at the PWI Coalition so I could make photocopies. So I, just running back and forth across the street on a regular basis, I got to know the staff and some of the key volunteers um, because at that time it was a very, very active and very much member-driven organization. That's why it formed. It formed by people who were infected to address their concerns. And it was very much an angry and activist organization, at least in its initial incarnation. And so that's, that was kind of my introduction to the politics of AIDS, was yeah. being around it, not being part of it, but being